in terms of making it available to new people, we're not doing so well. And I wanted to get into that next with um, uh, with Netflix. So as Stargate SG-1 was added to Netflix, in, was it December? Was it November? It was somewhere around there. This is the one I didn't open. Yeah, sorry. I'll get you details. And either someone at MGM. Yeah, 1st of December. Okay. Or someone at Netflix requested um, the library for SG-1. And they give them the version of Children of the Gods with nudity and slap a TVMA rating on all 10 seasons, which is not reflective of what the show is at all. Um, nudity was something that was added to the pilot. It was something that uh, that Showtime wanted. It was potentially something that MGM wanted to kind of up the, you know, the ante of the show. But the show was, was yeah, always was meant to be a family cable. series. In 1997, um, premium scripted television on cable meant F-bombs and nudity. Yeah. This yeah. was before The Sopranos. This was before, Way before. Dexter and... Uh, the this, this sort of high quality drama. Mm -hmm. And it's made a huge rift in, in online fandom because everyone's just, of course, you know, correctly freaking out that there are, there are potential new audience members that are going to look at that rating and say, uh, no, not for me, or no, maybe for me, but not for my family. And it completely misses the point of what the show is. Yeah, it's going to scare off a lot of people. Um, uh, uh, okay, let's let's back up here. There's three different versions of Children of the Gods. There's the original that aired on Showtime, uh, which had full frontal nudity. Mm -hmm. There was the syndication version, which you've probably seen in reruns elsewhere, like Sci-Fi Channel. Mm -hmm. uh, where the 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 scene is still there, but it's it's edited from the shoulders up, and uh, and then there's Children of the Gods Final Cut, Brad's revision from 2009 that uh, that also cut around that, cut out the nudity. Um, and I looked around when I was doing the write up on this. I looked around because in the United States, Stargate is currently streaming on three different services. SG One is on Netflix, it's on Amazon Prime Video, and it's on Hulu. And those three services all have three different versions of the pilot. <laughs> oh my God. Seriously? So now you're starting to think okay, did they request them? Did MGM deliberately decide to send each? each streamer a different copy or more than likely, I think my take on it, um, again, just kind of knowing how the industry works. My wife used to be a, a librarian for a media company. More than likely, it's probably somebody uh, inside MGM Pulling or working for a third party that MGM hired to manage its library who just says, okay, Stargate SG-1 and just pulled it off the shelf and sent it. And doesn't Having know no what context. the difference is or what they have or what the impact is going to be for Netflix viewership or for the show. Now that's one problem. One problem is they get that copy. It's also a worse copy of the, the show, right? TVMA or not, nudity or not, it's it's uh, it's not the best that Stargate it's has. It's not representative of the whole, yeah. Because uh, MGM has also recently upscaled SG-1. Right. The originals, the first seven seasons before they switched to digital cameras, uh, those were available in standard definition, 480p or so, uh, in 4.3 aspect ratio, which was the original broadcast. Which is not what's available on the DVDs. So the DVD yeah, we quality got the is still better. We got the DVDs and we got widescreen for the first time. Uh, I was just... Uh, uh, having an argument with somebody in the comments on GateWorld and uh, <laughs> went back and, and was watching your old walkthrough with Bruce Woloshin when he took you and Denise through yes, Rainmaker, Rainmaker Digital. Digital. And you have a whole day at Rainmaker video that's still archived on GateWorld's YouTube yeah. channel uh, where Bruce kind of shows you the process. And at one point he explicitly says, uh, you know, how it works. They, you know, you're only seeing 4.3, but the show is actually shot for 16.9. So now that the DVDs were coming out um, for the first time, we actually saw the show that they were making, which was the widescreen. If you want to watch widescreen and if you want to watch upscaled to a higher resolution, in the US, the only place you can do that right now is on Amazon. Hmm. Netflix doesn't have those copies. 
Now, do you have to have Amazon Prime to get it or do you have to buy it separately? Uh, it's it's included free right now with Amazon Prime. Okay. Uh, it's also for sale. Okay. If you want to buy it separately. Speaking yeah, Amazon of Amazon Prime subscribers, that's the best place to watch it right now. So, I mean, we just want to make it available to everyone over at you know, Netflix because that's a huge new potential audience for, for seeing this thing. And these are the numbers yeah. that MGM needs to see. Now, a so, lot of people say, well, I don't have Netflix. It doesn't matter. Right. Well, really, a well, lot of people have Netflix. Yeah. It's a huge audience. And uh, the exposure of Stargate as she went to that audience, it's a big deal for the franchise. It's It has the potential to get a lot of new viewers. If it's successful, then they can bring in Atlantis and then they can bring in Universe. And who knows, maybe MGM behind the scenes is talking with Netflix about doing the fourth Stargate series. Mm -hmm. Maybe Netflix wants to know what the audience is like. Mm -hmm. But what they've done is they've classified all 10 seasons, 214 episodes, as for mature audiences only. And so they're cutting their own audience in half. Yeah. If you, you don't even have to watch from the first episode. I just picked an ep episode at random. I dropped into season three and I clicked on Ergo. And guess what? As the, the first shot opens with the TV screen, the, the map transmission of the tropical planet at the beginning of Ergo, up there in the corner, it TVMA. says TVMA nudity. It's wrong. <laughs> it's, it's I've, been, I've been really writing this on Netflix. I think uh, all the effort that fans have put into uh, uh, having the, the, the Twitter campaigns to, to rally people, to bring back the show, to make an impression on MGM that this fan base is here. Fans got to rally around this because the fact that Netflix has the entire series labeled TVMA is the worst thing to happen to Stargate in years. Yeah, it's just irresponsible. So Robert C. Cooper had um, a similar comment at the end of his uh, recent chat in part two of our interview with him. And he's just like, you know, what the heck's going on, guys? This was a huge misfire. So The data is also there. Mm -hmm. uh, every episode of the series has received an official rating from the studio, right? It pops up if you watch it on Sci-Fi Channel. It pops up as, you know, TV-14, TV-PG. Not every episode is the same, but the no. data is in there. It's in a it's in a spreadsheet somewhere at MGM. What each of those episodes is actually rated. Yeah, they need to take advantage of it. Thank you for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving us a thumbs up with that like button. It will encourage the algorithm to show this to other Stargate fans. Also, please consider sending this to a fellow Stargate friend. I also want to invite you to subscribe to future episodes right here on YouTube. We are a live show, so changes are likely to happen all the time. And if you plan on joining us live, you'll want to be the first to know. Be sure to visit dialthegate.com for the complete guest schedule so you'll know when to join us and ask your very own questions to our guests. See you on the other side.